Mr. Liam Neeson is on the show tonight. There he is. Liam, so good to see you. You are looking fantastic, as always. Talk me through, what is Liam Neeson's current training workout regime? What, what are we doing? I have got to down, James, to 30, 35 minutes a day. That's the trend. And it's essentially uh, a stationary bike, a rowing machine, basic sit-ups, push-ups, and some kettlebells on a stretch. If I don't get it done within 30, 35 minutes, there's something wrong. But I keep it as short as that. Yeah. Do you feel pressure with the sort of movies that you're making right now to, to be in... Because I guess you must need so much stamina for what you're filming right now. Well, I, th I think if you're playing the lead in any film, you need stamina. Uh, because you're basically in every scene, and the days are long, so it's, it behoves you to keep reasonably fit. I don't mean you have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was 35, but I think you, you owe it to yourself and your crew and your comrades to keep keep reasonably fit, and, and that's what I do. I'm reasonably fit. I'd settle for looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger now. <laughs> and not even 35, that's my goal. <laughs> to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at, what is he, 70, 65? What do we think he is? He's gotta be over 70. Yeah, he's gotta be 70. Now, Liam, uh, people are constantly talking, all the time, it seems, about who will be the next James Bond was there ever a time, and there must have been, where your name was in the running? Yeah, they, they, they approached me. I believe it was... I got a couple of calls from Barbara Broccoli, um, who's now the, the main producer of the Bond films. Now, this was after I'd done, I'd done Schindler's List, which was, you know, 26 years ago. Uh, but I... I wasn't offered it. I know they were looking at various actors, and I apparently was, was among them. Uh, however, my, my dear departed wife did say to me, um, we were doing a movie together in uh, North Car South Carolina, and she says, darling, if you're offered James Bond and you're going to play it, you're not going to marry me. <laughs> so... And any time we had arguments after that, I would always go up to her and go, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd have been a great Bond. You really would. You'd have been fantastic. You'd have been absolutely... But I still don't actually think it's too late. I still think we could see Liam Neeson's Bond. Am I... <laughs> Why don't they do that? Because you can drive now? Because didn't you... You only started driving quite sort of... In, was it your late 20s, early 30s? Yeah, yeah, I was 20, 28, I think, maybe 29. And you yeah. had a, quite a special driving instructor, is that right? I did. I had a lady by the name of Dame Helen Mirren. Oh, wow. <laughs> we were doing a, a, a film called Excalibur, John Bowman's Excalibur. This was 1979, 1980. And uh, uh, Helen and I formed a lovely friendship. Uh, very proud to say, but she taught me how to drive. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Wow, was she a, a good instructor? She was very good. And then I, I had to go to a, a, a British driving school when in London. It took two, two, two hour sessions uh, because I got this job in Pinewood Studios, but they wouldn't supply the transport for me. So right. I had to get a test, and I bought this little two CV six little Citroen. French car. They don't make them anymore. As my friend Gabriel Byrne described it, it's a, it's a converted sewing machine. Well, we have a picture of that car right here. And if you ever wanted to dispel the idea that Liam Neeson could have or could be James Bond, the thought of him driving this will really put that out of your mind. Look at that. <laughs> An absolute beauty of a car. It really, really is. Now, Liam, yes, you've, you've had such an incredible career. It's so varied. I would argue it's it's as good a career as anybody could, could ever, ever hope to achieve as, as an actor, really. But I'm interested, yeah, when you, lucky. When you so found lucky. yourself in a lightsaber battle with Darth Maul in Star Wars The Phantom Menace, we got a picture of it here, did you ever find yourself thinking, how did I, how did I end up here? <laughs> um, I did a little bit, yeah, yeah. And it was especially funny, because Ewan McGregor was my... Had a one, yeah. I apprentice. And the first time we had to use our lightsabers, of course, we started doing 
the sound effects. Yeah. George Lucas says, guys, you don't have to do that. We, we can add that in. Later. <laughs> but Darth, Darth Maul, the guy you showed the photograph, um, he's, uh, he's, he's, he was played by this wonderful uh, guy called Ray Parks from London, who's a really, really good at mixed martial arts and all the rest of it. But he talks like that. Hello, Liam. Listen, I'll come at you with the left. You come at me with the right, right? And he talks like that, but then when you see the movie, it's like, yes, master. <laughs> that was quite funny to see, you know? Let's talk about The Ice Road, which is an absolute adrenaline rush of a movie. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. I play a guy called Mike McCann. I'm an ice road truck driver, and we have these... Uh, I, I just have to plug these, this amazing company, these Kenworth Trucks. Yeah. Uh, the company just bent over backwards to accommodate us. We had three or four of them. They're 18 wheelers and they're like inside the cab. It's like being in a small New York apartment. Uh, they were amazing. And we were driving these trucks on real uh, frozen uh, Lake Winnipeg, I think it was, this, this ice road. Anyway, the story is we're trying to get to a, a diamond mine in the north of Canada where 20 miners are trapped underground. And we have to deliver this special piece of equipment. Lawrence Fishburne and myself, uh, lovely actress Amber Mid-Thunder, who's this young Native American uh, ice road trucker. And, and we have to we have 30 hours to get there, just before 30 hours. So there's thrills and spells along the way, trucks breaking down, hypothermia, uh, truck going into the ice, Diving in under the ice to save somebody. It was a, it was a lot of stuff. But, I mean, but when, thrills you're doing, when you're doing these movies that, that, you're, that you're making right now, are you ever, you know, when you're there about to dive under the ice of a truck, are you never thinking, like, I should do a rom-com in Hawaii? <laughs> what, what is it in you that just keeps challenging yourself in this way? I don't know. It's uh, I, I, I like the I like the the challenge of that, you know, and uh, you know, getting back to being reasonably fit. And, and there's a guy I follow called Wim Hof. I don't know if you've, you've been aware of this oh, guy. Oh, Liam, you have walked into. You don't even understand the. Oh, uh, you don't understand the pain that you've brought on our team by bringing that up, because. Louis Weymouth, who is sat like here, will not stop talking about the Wim Hof method in the shower. And his name's Louis Weymouth, and we've actually changed his name to Louis Wim Hof. <laughs> <laughs> Do you two want to bore us for 10 minutes talking about this? <laughs> Take it away, fellas. Get in there. What is it, Liam? You tell us like we haven't heard it 50 times. <laughs> I, 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 no, I'm not going to. It's, I, I, I learned it from my son, Daniel, who's been following Mr. Wim Hof for a couple of years. Um, it's essentially subjecting yourself to ice-cold water, breathing in a certain way, usually 40 deep breaths, and it does wonders for your constitution. And um, uh, I like doing it. And I, I've, I've found since I've done it, I've never had a cold... I've never had a flu. I've uh, it's 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 exhilarating. You should start it, James. Seriously, have you start being, have being you... sat, have a shower, and then stand under a cold shower. Try and get to thirty seconds. Uh, it just invigorates you and have you helps found, your. Immune have you found it's made you less funny? Because that's that's how. <laughs> That has been a big takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will try it. Now that you... I didn't trust him, but I do trust you, which is <laughs> odd, because I've known him about 15 years, and yet I trust you more.